or something. It's, it's like somehow there's a belief in these private minds again, and that there's only so much to go around of this love stuff. And you steal my heart away. You stole my heart. I've heard that in a lot of country songs. <laughs> stole my heart. So, and, and I just wanted to say, it's not to make fun of the way people eat or, or to have any judgment about it whatsoever, because when we got into the San Adrian, initially there was some fear or some concern about, you know, do I have to give this up? And we said, no, no, keep eating the way you're eating. Do what you want to do. It's okay. It's okay. But if it would be helpful if you take a look at it, you know, if you just have a little willingness to take a look at that too. Don't just put, put nutrition off to the side and say, well, you know, I've got this one handled and so I don't need to look at this, but look at, you know, throw it in there with all the rest of the beliefs and look at that too. There's no judgment about what you do behavior-wise. Mm -hmm. That would be making it personal. Eat whatever that you want, be. whenever you want. That doesn't mean anything to God, but God doesn't care. <laughs> but but it's just being willing to look at the beliefs surrounding it because it, again, if there's any, if there's any, uh, <coughs> if there's any attachment to it, then there's going to be pain with it, and it, you know, I mean throwing pain in this big category, I mean, it's like if I see myself as being on a specific diet or a specific way of eating, and I go to somebody's house and they happen to be serving something that's not included in that, then there may be like a sense of upset or a sense of frustration. Like, oh, geez, what do I do now? Do I eat it and feel bad? Or do I say something and ask for something else to eat? Or, you know, I mean, if there's some, if it's upsetting to me, then there must be some attachment to it, and it has to be looked at too. It's really redefining the problem. Mm -hmm. In other words, you could say that anorexia and bulimia seems to be a problem involving eating. They're, they're classified as eating disorders. Mm -hmm. Overeating as well. Overeating. Overeating is yeah, classified. Bulimia and, and yes, purging. Bulimia. Yeah, and basically, again, it's like it's not really an eating disorder. It's, oh, I've got a, there's a judgment problem going on here. Gambling disorders, you know, seem to involve money, spending, and, and, you know, sometimes they have, for people that spend a lot, whether it's Gamblers Anonymous or whether people who just can't go wild with credit cards, and it seems to be a, a financial problem, a judgment problem. Alcoholism, judgment problem, you know. Sexual addiction, no, judgment problem, <laughs> you know. You can just, all the things that they seem to have the support groups, you know, even the ones, the specialized ones for special disorders, like spina bifida support group, no. Judgment problem. AIDS, HIV support group, no. Judgment problem, you know. It's the, the, the problems are not specific. The problems seem to be of involving money. It seem to be involving Codependency, mm -hmm. uh, no, judgment problem. Um, emotions Anonymous, they have a cross that group Emo for emotional disorders, no. <laughs> judgment problem. If we get back to our level, our thing of the levels of the mind, that, the, that this is what we do and we trace it back, is that all those things that I was just mentioning are perceived out here on the outer ring. They're all per they all seem to be involved perception. They all seem to be involved specific things like bodies, diseases, viruses, you know, eating too much, drinking too much alcohol. You know, seems to be all of them seem to be out here on the outer ring. But what we're learning here is that the inner ring produced the outer rings. So in other words, the judgment, there's a defilement of the altar. There's a wish to believe in the ego. There's a wish to believe the mind is, is actually believing that it can separate from God. That's, that's a defilement of the altar. So then you have the belief of separation, you have all these other beliefs. The thoughts spring from the beliefs. In other words, <coughs> here's the thinking, but the beliefs kind of determine the parameters of thinking. To give you a specific example that Jesus uses, he says that 
you may believe that you cannot control the direction of your thinking. Or you may believe that your thoughts are have no effects. You can believe that about thoughts. People do. I can't change my thinking. I've tried to meditate. My thoughts run <laughs> rampant in there. It's like being in a, a clothes dryer, you know, tossed around like that. It's like change my thinking, you know. I have no control over that. I have enough time difficulty trying to change my behavior. Change my thinking? You gotta be kidding. You know, you ever tried to meditate? They'll say, have you been able to change the direction of your thoughts? You know? And so there's a belief that it's like a parameter placed on thoughts. So, in other words, um, another thing you can believe you may believe that, um, that fear, Jesus says, is not your responsibility. You know, when a lot of times when people pray to Jesus, they say, Jesus, take my fear away. Well, Jesus has an answer for them in the Course. It's your responsibility. Fear is your responsibility. I cannot take your fear away. If I, to take your fear away would be to interfere with your thoughts and the consequences of your thoughts. He says, if I came in between your thoughts and the consequences of your thoughts, he said, I would be tampering with the most basic law of cause and effect there is. He says, I can help you, I can remind you that you don't watch your thoughts enough, carefully enough. And I can remind you that you're much too tolerant of <laughs> mind wandering. But the one thing I cannot do is come in between your thoughts and the consequences of your thoughts. And to take your fear away is like, that's what the request is. Come into my mind. But isn't that always the request? Whether you're having conflict or whatever. Usually if you travel back far enough, it's fear-based of some kind. Fear that they'll leave you or reject you or won't understand you or whatever. And so fear, <coughs> that's what <laughs> I guess one of the things that I'm always praying for is for him to take that away too. So if he doesn't take that away, then it's up to me to be vigilant of my thoughts and if I really see where things are at, then it should dissolve them. Well, in a sense, that you could say that even coming to this week intensive is a symbol of your desire to have that fear be removed. And again, if you come to me, I'm going to keep pointing you back to self-responsibility. I'm not going to say, here I am, the Messiah, the Guru, I will magically come and take all of your fear away from everyone because I'm, I'm just not going to teach that. I'm going to say, well, let's together, let's look at the thought systems. And then as soon as you can see the ego raised to awareness, you can say, hey, this thing offers me no good. Then, I'm, then you can say, I will withdraw my investment in it because I see that it offers me no good. If I still think that it has offers me something of value, if I still think judgment offers me something about you, why am I going to want to get rid of it? You see? Mm -hmm. it, that's what the whole point of to un unveil the ego is all about, because as long as it seems to offer some value or some safety, then the Holy Spirit is what I'm going to be afraid of. The Holy Spirit is going to be seen as, as the thing that's trying to, to come and get me. If I'm identified with the ego, and here comes this light in my mind, that's going to dispel the ego, and I think I am the ego, yikes! There's going to be a fear of the Holy Spirit. So the, that's where the real fear comes in. And when we talk about trust, it's the same thing. Trust what? A lot of times we say, I don't trust my brother. We were talking, or I don't trust a co-worker, or I don't trust a family member, or <laughs> something like that. I don't, I don't trust them. But really what it's, it's saying is, is if there's a, a trust issue, really it, it's a trust issue that goes back to God, or to the Holy Spirit. The mind tries to project it out and personify it. Oh, oh I know, so and so is trustworthy. I know that certain people that I know are trustworthy, it's these other people that aren't trustworthy. And I know which ones are. And I know which, which ones, ones are trustworthy. Aren't. 
and which ones aren't. I know because I know because of their behavior. I've got I've got files stored up on each of them, <laughs> the computer file, and these are the ones that have let me down and they've let others down too. And I've got the witnesses to prove it. I know that they're untrustworthy. And really, what the course is saying is, little child, you're you're. You're asleep and you're dreaming. Your perception is very twisted and confused. You don't, you're, you're not sure about trusting your brothers because you don't trust the Holy Spirit. You've made up a false identity and you've become very comfortable with this false identity. You've become identified with a little body and you think that's your life now. You think that you've forgotten your spiritual identity in heaven and you think, that that's your life. And you're afraid of the Holy Spirit because it seems like the Holy Spirit is threatening your little your little stash, your little perceptual identity that you've made up. Now that's an important thing because it seems like the fear is of things happening on the screen. Oh, I don't want to get cancer. I don't want to have my house robbed. I don't want I don't want to get yelled at. I don't want to, you know, all those kind of things that seem to happen, but really the fear is of, as Jesus says, the fear is of redemption, or the fear is of, of the Holy Spirit. That's a helpful one to throw out on the table right away, because, you know, in the end when you start to think about it, I'm afraid of the Holy Spirit? Why should I be afraid of this loving light in my mind that, that just keeps reminding me how wonderful I am? how perfect I am, how whole, how innocent. That the separation never occurred at all. Yeah, it seems kind of bonkers to think, you're not really afraid of the Holy Spirit? <laughs> and, and he's trying to help me? I'm making the Holy Spirit out to be the enemy? And he's really the, the savior? <laughs> you know, he's really the, the healer? It's, you know, it's really good to start to take a look at that, but I mean, it, if you really follow the thinking down, that's 